I'm here with Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, so, I'm going to ask him a few questions about NPM, about Node, and about JavaScript in general. The first question is, there's a lot of hype surrounding Node, like people are like, this is, what, this is the tool, this is it. So, is it really worth all the hype, or are people just, or is it just overrated, what do you think? Okay. So, like, I, I guess I have some bias from working at NPM, and you know, the, we are the package manager for all JavaScript, but, uh, the, so I built things in before working in NPM, large infrastructure pieces. There are a lot of big banks and huge companies, shipping companies, et cetera, that rely on Node. And one of the reasons is that being able to write JavaScript on both sides, it really eliminates uh, the language problem. You, if everybody like, is writing in the same language across the board, they can use modules on both ends, they can write things thinking about the actual problem instead mm -hmm. of thinking about maybe some idiosyncrasies in another language that they're not as comfortable with. So uh, Node tends to win out a lot of the time in in-house conversations because people go, what language does everybody here know? And they go, uh, JavaScript, because we all have to write it anyway. And then they go, all right, well, Node can work as the tool for this job. Sometimes it's not the tool, but frequently enough it works. Okay. Um, NPM and Yarn, any comments on that? So, uh, like a fun thing about the whole, there was like the big NPM versus Yarn controversy, is that like NPM and Yarn people work together on their in individual projects, and NPM as a whole is super, super, super into people building CLIs that fit their use case. Like, NPM tries to be a more general CLI because mm -hmm. it's being used by significantly more people than any other CLI would. But uh, there are a ton of them out there. And in fact, the leaders of each project of different kinds, they actually all hang out together in a chat room and talk out ideas together and like, where advancements can be made. And with the release of NPM 5, the uh, the CLI team actually broke it apart into really easy to reuse modules so people who are working on other pieces could go, oh, well, I need a caching solution, but I have something else. So let's grab your caching part and then I can work with everything else that I'm trying to do. And yeah, it's, it's like, they're, I'm super pro yarn. They solve a really great problem for a lot of people who need that exact problem solved. And it's pretty cool to know that NPM and Yarn actually work together, so it's not like an or situation, it's no. not like an and situation. Yeah, that was, I think that was a really big confusing thing for a lot of people when Yarn came out. And like The Yarn team and the NPM team like, talked beforehand. It's like, we knew Yarn was coming long in advance. It was like a... But, <laughs> no, yeah. they're, uh, they're like a great set of developers and people, and I feel like sometimes people decided that they needed to take an allegiance stand, and all of us were going, but <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> All right. Um, now, jump to the future. So, what do you think? What is one feature, features that you can absolutely not that Ecmo Night like, must have? Oh, must have. Um, so I got like all dreamy today. About, so I'm a really big sucker for promises, and um, I almost always use a library called Bluebird to handle all of my promises because Bluebird has this amazing API. And I every time I write promises with native promises, I just miss a lot of Bluebird's API. Like, oh, I don't have this or this or this, and then I have to write a lot more code and whatnot. So I'm always just hoping, like deep down, that the TC39 group is like, oh, let's add all this functionality to native promises, and then I don't have to use this library anymore. It'd be so nice. <laughs> Pretty cool. I've got one more question about NPM. Uh, can you cite an M NPM module that you think is like something indispensable that should be there in every Node developer's toolbox? Um, so it it's not specifically NPM, but uh, our, our CEO's Isaac wrote. Uh, a test framework called TAP that I am super, super a sucker for. Like, I use TAP on every single project. It's really, really fast, mm -hmm. and it doesn't leak global pieces into your code base. And yeah. it's just, it's like this super fast and super low maintenance test framework. And so I, like every project that I start, it's like, we're using TAP now. 
and people are like, oh yeah, whatever. But I'm like, yes, that's what we're doing. It's very fast. And it has uh, certain code coverage pieces like that are easily extendable into it. So. All right. And the last question is like, well, I'm interviewing you. I'm pretty sure there's a new framework that's popped up somewhere in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind Probably. of getting hard to keep up with them. So what, what would your advice be for someone who's trying to? Okay. Um, <laughs> So I struggle to keep up. I think everybody does. And the big, the big thing is, if you can, attend conferences. Like reading about things, you can get a little bit of impedance mismatch and whatnot. But attending a conference, you can actually maybe meet somebody who's working on it or who has run into some problems with it that you can talk to them about. And most speakers are really, really good about, you can walk up to them and they'll go, yeah, let's talk for a little bit. Yeah, they're and, super friendly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, most every speaker you'll ever meet is super friendly. Um, and like really excited about what they worked on. So of course they want to talk to you about it. And so they, like, that's my best way of ever finding out anything is going, oh, I just watched this talk on this and it seems pretty interesting. I'll go do that. If you don't have that resource, oh gosh, I find out about everything on Twitter. It's a fire hose, I know. But that and um, there's there's also a Slack called We All JS, which is like a really, really, really big Slack community of JavaScript developers that talk about JavaScript and all sorts of things surrounding it all day long. I mean, thousands of people. Uh, and it's like really well maintained, so there's no jerks. They just like boo jerks immediately. So you can ask like policy. really good questions in there in a learning area or a more advanced question in a certain other area, and people are just there to help or to talk you through things. Or, hey, I have an opinion about this, and then go, let's hear it, let's do this. Um, and so that might be another really good place to find it. Um, yeah, that's where I learn about new things. Uh, you said conferences, so are there any conferences that you would recommend? So, like, I'm I'm running off of like kind of a high of being here right now, but Brazil JS was seriously the, one of the best organized. I can't say the best because like somebody's gonna get mad somewhere, but like one of the best organized JavaScript conferences that I've ever been to. So, like, if you're local to the area, for sure. If not, I mean, really try. Uh, I'm I'm kind of a sucker for both. Well, it used to be Cascadia, like a couple years ago, Cascadia JS was a really big one. And this year they didn't run, but Seattle JS like was a meetup group that I was a part of. They, or like a few of the organizers from that put on a conference. Um, it's it's my hometown one, so I'm a little bit biased yeah. toward it, but it's all, it always tends to be pretty well run. They really care about the attendees there. They put a lot of time and effort into it, and you can feel it while you're there to making it a more community-based thing. And they do a really good job of making the speakers feel accessible, which is huge for because like, sometimes people will attend a conference and be like, well, my question's too stupid for them. And you go, no, yeah. <laughs> no. Like three months ago, I asked the same question. So most of the time, like, so it's, yeah. The, I like a situation where they make speakers like a little bit more available. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much the point of it, right? You're there to know things, so yeah. why not? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that's, those ones are my, are my faves. Uh, I had a really, really, really great similar experience at um, the Singapore-based, the Asia Dev Fest or Dev Fest Asia. Uh, also a very similar experience to that, where there was clearly like an amalgamation of things. They didn't separate, oh, the speakers are some kind of unattainable mm -hmm. thing. They had a really nice local uh, community that they fed into and they told all the speakers beforehand, hey, we have like our local JavaScript meetup. It's right beforehand, come meet people, let's talk. Mm. Really good idea. Yeah. All right, great. Um, that's it from my end. Awesome. Thank you.